everybody, welcome to the newest episode of The Bearded Gamer Show. Now, as always, I'm your host, The Bearded Gamer, Chris Arnone. Let's get straight to that good news, bad news. So first up, I got some really good news for some of us more old school fans, all right? Zone of the Enders HD. Now, this was announced quite a while ago. It's been in the works. It is coming to us, however, on October 30th. But there's some extra good news. And with it will be a Metal Gear Rising Revengeance demo. So you get Zone of the Enders with a cyborg ninja. Win. Yeah. Cool. So if you didn't already want to go and play Zone of the Enders HD, now you're also going to get to play as Raiden and slice th things up for a little while. That's just cool. More good news. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put this down right now. I got nothing but good news this week. It's a good time, all right? Sony has announced two new PlayStation Vitas, one in red and one in blue. Okay, I'm kidding. That, that's true, but that's not really the good news. The really good news for PlayStation Vita owners is PlayStation Plus is officially coming to your tiny little Sony console in November. So they had said before that it's coming, but they don't know when. Well, now we officially know. November, you'll get PlayStation Plus. Now, nothing else has been outlined as far as what will be in your uh, instant game, di digital game collection or whatnot, you know, exactly how they're going to support it, but it's coming in November. Better news from Sony. They have announced a newer, slimmer PlayStation 3. Now, this has been heavily rumored for a while. We were kind of surprised we didn't see it before, but now at Tokyo Game Show, they have, in fact, announced a newer, slimmer PlayStation 3. It's going to be launching in the U.S. on September 25th, for $269, and it's going to be 250 gigabytes. Now, that version will come bundled with a Game of the Year edition Uncharted 3, fantastic game, by the way, and $30 worth of in-game credit for content in, the, in Dust 514. So it seems like they're really trying to push that particular game. Now, they also announced there's going to be a $249 unbundled edition coming out sometime. They, they haven't given an exact time on that. They've just said... At the launch date, they'll just have that bundle. Uh, now, they've said this is going to be 50% smaller than the original fatty PS3s and 25% smaller than the slimmer PS3s that have been out more recently. Uh, follow up on that one, though. There will be no price drops for the current SKUs of the PS3 that are out there right now. They're just going to sell those out at their current prices and, and move along. Uh, some more good news. Like I said, it's all good news this week, right? Humble Indie Bundle 6 was announced, all right? You love this stuff. I, I always love it when this comes out. So what it is, it's a package of, hum of indie games. And what you do, you pick your price. You pay as much or as little as you want. And then you get to divide that money up between a couple different charities, the developers themselves, and the site that actually runs the Humble Indie Bundle. So the lineup this time, you have Rocard, Shatter, Space Pirates and Zombies, Vessel, Torchlight, all right? Torchlight 2 just came out, but you can actually get original Torchlight in this. And then the bonus that they put in there, which is if you spend more than the average that people are spending, you also unlock Dust Force. Uh, and of course, with that, if you want to get it cheap, you want to get in early because the more people spend above the average, the higher the average goes. Simple math, people. Uh, so final piece of good news, all right? Borderlands 2 is officially out. I've got it. I've played it. It's all that in a box of kittens. That's what I got to say about that. Let's get into a controller confessional. So in this controller confessional, let's, let's start off by saying I've just recently rented Forza Motorsport 4. Now, I'm a big racing game fan. I've been meaning to get around to this one for a while. I played it at E3 last year or so, and, you know... It, I thought it was really cool, and I got Gran Turismo, and I've been sort of, you know, wanting to play it, and finally now have gotten a little space in my game queue, waiting for, you know, the holiday games are coming soon, but not yet, and so I've got Forza Motorsport 4, and it's awesome. I'm having fun with it, but I started to look at the DLC and felt honestly overwhelmed. They've had monthly content packs, car packs out, every single month since the game launched, back in October of last year, okay? It's been almost a year. Plus, they brought, they made a deal with, with Porsche. So for like 20 or 30 bucks, you can get a whole bunch of Porsche cars. What this all adds up to is something like $100 worth of DLC for one game, which is tremendous. Um, but what's worse is if I'm looking through the section in the game where I want to buy cars with the virtual credits that I've earned through racing, it includes the DLC cars, all right? Now, there's a little DLC sort of slashed through them, but in some ways, it feels a little dirty. It's, 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 it's like it's trying to push me to buy this stuff. 
But then it gets a little harder still, because say if I see a car I really want and it's DLC, and so I want to consider, well, maybe I want to go buy this. Well, there's no in-game marketplace. You can sort of go and look at what's available, but then it has to take you out to the Xbox Live marketplace. And because there's so much content there, and it's not well organized, it's really hard to figure out, okay, what car was that, or what pack was it in? It's, it's, it's just really difficult to deal with. And I started to wonder, is there such a thing as too much DLC? Can you have too much DLC? Now, now to be clear, I'm generally a supporter of DLC. When it's obvious that that content was created after the game went gold. So, okay, the team worked as hard as they could, made a finished product, polished it up real nice, it went gold, it went out to print, and then the team kept working. I'm not talking about the whole, you know, DLC already on the disc crap. I'm talking about real DLC, adding content to a great game, which obviously this is, you know, they, they're still supporting it this far out. But is there such a thing as too much? And then I started to think, oh, maybe not. Let's talk Rock Band, all right? There are thousands of tracks available in Rock Band, but in the game, you have a marketplace built in. On Xbox, you even have a separate app you can download, and it's very easy to navigate. It's very easy to find what you want and to get it very quickly and very easily and to search for exactly what you want. And that really makes it a lot easier to deal with. So I, I did sort of come to the conclusion that, you know, I don't think there is such a thing as too much DLC. But where you can go wrong, first off, if you're gonna build a business selling DLC, you need to build a very good in-game interface, an in-game UI for navigating and purchasing that content. And you also don't need to make me feel like you're trying to sell me stuff all the freaking time, all right? I mean, Rock Band has its list of recommended tracks as I'm scrolling through, but there's not that many, especially considering how many total DLC tracks are available. Forza, I just constantly feel like the game is trying to sell me something. And you know, that just really bothers me. It's, it's a way to put me off the game just a little bit. So that's my bottom line, and that's my controller confessional in this video. See you guys next time.